G'day folks. Well, I finally decided um, enough is enough with slipping oily belts on the uh, old lathe and uh, I'm going to sort of non-destructively sheathe this um, flat belt pulley with a um, serpentine belt one and replace this entire back stand with a um, uh, it's sort of like a 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 uh, reduction box. It reduces 14, 1440 RPM down to 450 at 50 hertz, but I will be driving it with a VFD. Um, one of many I've acquired a few recently, but um, I want a bit of extra overrun or overpower on the VFD. I don't want to be running, say, a 0.75 kilowatt motor on a um, half horsepower VFD or anything like that, because then I'll just keep tripping it out. So, uh, yeah. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to have to take the spindle down and it's a good opportunity to clean everything up and check the bearing surfaces and everything. So I'm starting by harvesting some pulleys that I can weld a new centre into and actually machine out to fit the old um, flat belt ones. Just taking this one apart. Uh, take a clip off and that'll come off. It's just an old Ford. Uh, scroll air con air con compressor and there's another dead one outside I just picked these up at the scrapyard this one here I'll give that a good clean and de-rust when I get it off the big ones going on the motor Ew. <laughs> yeah the big ones going on the electric motor and the little ones going on the uh, lathe itself um, yeah. Yuck. That's oil. I'll have to soak that up. <laughs> All oil and water. And a bit of fluorescent. <laughs> Nasty. Alright, I'll clean that up and uh, keep stripping these compressors down and get the pulleys off and machine and do all the hubs before I uh, take the lathe apart. Hopefully everything will just bolt straight on. I won't have to try and find another lathe to finish it off. <laughs> no, it'll be all good. All you do is make all the parts required to do the conversion, take the lathe out of commission, assemble it all, and away you go. And we have a corrosion issue, so heat and auto trans fluid. <laughs> it should uh, help it get out. That one there's just going to come off. Yeah, this one's being difficult. It's just rusted on there, so got the hacksaw in behind the plate and uh, cut it off. Just had to pry it away and buckle the plate out far enough to get the hacksaw blade in and cut it out. Now I can take the clip off and drive this off. Same with that one there. Yeah. Not worth trying to uh, get off intact because they're completely useless. Just cut it out, cut it off. The other option is going to be to run a 9 inch grinder down this side here and cut the whole front off it. But the, um, the plate hub was uh, accessible. Hopefully that one will just slip off because it's still fairly new and well greased. This one here, again, might be a case of uh, a lot of brute force. As long as I don't warp the outer rim, it's fine. What I'm going to have to do is machine a uh, steel slug to go inside it. Uh, that one should be alright. There's an inner lip there. So I'll machine a steel disc to fit inside it, weld it in, then drill it up in the lathe and actually bore it and key it. Uh, I'll probably have to do that at work. I'll EDM the key in it and uh, should be right. It's a nice fit. It's not tight, but yeah, there's still a bit of rust on there. It'll loosen up a little bit, but essentially what I'm going to do is um, 
blue Loctite and sort of a hemispherical half key. I don't, I'm not going to be bothered taking it to work and EDMing it. What I'll do is I'll put it in the mill and actually plunge an end mill down about halfway through here and put a hemisphere um, key slot in it and a grub screw driving into the key. More than enough for the amount of power that's going through this. I mean it's only 0.75 kilowatt through the reduction on a lathe with a belt drive. The belt's going to slip or the, v the VFD is going to be set to trip out before anything horrible happens because this would have the potential to wreck the lathe if something does go horribly wrong. Uh, right now if you stall it, stall the spindle, the belt slips to the point where it just scoots off and uh, stops. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a few safety features in here. But yeah, I, I can't be bothered waiting a week or so to get the EDM cleared up at work and uh, use that and get this job done. <laughs> I do need my own EDM but I'll do that when I get my own uh, industrial factory. Which is coming in the future, not near, probably not near future, but next 12 months or so I'm going to look at a factory and actually uh, get set up with three phase, proper machine shop, CNC, um, computer lab, all that sort of stuff. Spend some real money on the uh, hobby shop project <laughs> and turn it into a full time business hopefully. I'll be able to work on my own, I won't be uh, working for uh, my current job, I'll uh, actually go off on my own and do my own thing the next year or two. Should be quite good. Perfect. Now it just needs a grub screw and maybe a tiny bit of uh, yellow Loctite retaining compound. That's about it. Perfect. You don't need to make a square keyway if you're not doing ultra high torque stuff. And again, square keyways, again, a bit overrated. You get a lot more surface area on a round one. It's a bit more labor intensive. Um, yeah, works quite well. Drill it, sort of counterbore it halfway down and then tap it for a 6mm grub screw. It's a long series tap. It's the only one I've got. No spiral is not good for uh, hard material, but I can just ease it through. Should work quite well. Alright, so the motor, pull, motor pulley is fitted up and ready to run. Now to fit the other one to the uh, lathe itself. 
Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. This one, I don't have enough bar stock to actually make a uh, a solid steel centerpiece, but it's not really necessary. What I'm going to do is bore this out to slip over this uh, flat belt um, step, so it'll it'll slip over and butt up against the uh, face of this one here. And I'm going to drill and tap in four places into here. I know it's a little bit destructive, it's not as bad as actually uh, welding it to anything, but I'm just going to gently drill and tap a few little 4mm holes and actually fit it up and then smash a um, UHMW, just a support ring, in behind it. So screw it, lock tight it, and then bash a um, UHMW PE um, support ring in there. So I'm making the support ring at the moment, then I'm going to uh, clamp this in the lathe and uh, machine the center out and machine it out to uh, 82.4 82.4 is the major diameter of this it is a um, slightly arched surface um, what do you call it um, cambered surface to run a flat belt you need to have cambered pulleys but it it'll work just fine for what I'm doing yeah shouldn't have any issues at all Okay, after making a lot of swarf, I now have a inner supporting ring and the main drive pulley. Um, by the time this is pressed in, they both meet the same diameter. At the moment, this um, UHMW ring is a little bit big, but once it's tapped in, it actually matches the uh, diameter of the flat belt pulley perfectly. Same with the inside of this. Spot on. And it still retains the... Uh, Ford Motor Company logo and the part number. <laughs> Even though the center of it's been completely machined out. All I did was just uh, plunge it with the boring bar until it started uh, wiggling and then uh, yeah, stop the uh, lathe and just rip the whole thing off. Done. <laughs> Gotta love having a small lathe at hand. Uh, I've just got to make sure everything's right before I uh, start taking it apart because uh, I can't use it when it's apart. <laughs> Having a working lathe means you can replicate everything, but when that lathe's out of action, well, yeah, you could be in trouble. Well, I do have another lathe that's out in the carport, but it's much bigger. So, uh, yeah, if need be, I'll, uh, I'll machine some stuff up on the big turret lathe outside. All right, now let's take the spindle out. I've got the belt guard off. Definitely a good time to clean the uh, back gears, not that I use them. Um, yeah. Things plain bearing, well there's actually no bearing material. These were just basically a line board iron block with a uh, hardened spindle and that's it. <laughs> there are no bearing shells, there's no white metal, nothing. This is wartime production machine, very cheap, but very effective and it's still very effective today. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, remove this collar, slacken these bolts off a bit more. Mind you, it's already pretty loose. Uh, and the spindle should just float free and all this will just come out as one collection of parts, hopefully. <laughs> That's the idea. The spindle does come out that way. I don't have to take the chuck off and upset the um, well, it's concentric concentricity, but yeah and all that can come off afterwards. Alright, so I've got the uh, back gear directional selector removed so the preload collar and its uh, little washer can be removed and uh, then the spindle will drift free. As you can see, she's pretty rough. But again, I never really I wasn't getting the uh, headstock rebuilt or anything when I did it. Eventually I'll get it redone, but again, everything on this lathe is just severely worn, so it's not really worth uh, spending a huge amount of money on. Uh, as you can see, somebody wanted to swing a big job, a frequent job, and uh, they've actually gouged out the bed. So, yeah, poor old thing. But yeah, the spindle itself is uh, now completely free. So I'll remove that and lay it out on the table and you can have a look at it. But you can see the difference in wear on those teeth. 
compared with the unworn part and then the worn part. Same with the uh, back gear teeth. Done a hell of a lot of work. 19, 1941 or 1942, uh, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, it's a war production machine. Alright, so I've uh, transferred the uh, bolt holes from the, the placement drive pulley and just getting ready to uh, tap them. Drilled them 3.2mm, I'll tap them M4 and use some high tensile cap screws and by the time I ram that uh, UHMW annulus in there it's not going anywhere and it should be almost completely concentric or at least close enough. It'll be better than it was anyway. <laughs> it's definitely going to be better than it was.